Good day, everyone. I'm Mr. Ong Wei Xiang from Sri Putra Sixth Form College. Today, we would like to talk about the light dependent reactions in photosynthesis, part one, which is the non cyclic photophosphor relation. At the end of the lessons, you should be able to describe photosystem structure and explain the photo activation of chlorophyll A resulting in photolysis of water and explain the non-cyclic photophosphor relations including electron transport system resulting in the production of ATP and reduced NADP. Photosystem. What is photosystem? The light dependent reactions of photosynthesis begin when a chlorophyll A and accessory pigments absorb light. So where is the chlorophyll? Okay. This is the chloroplast. Then this is a granum. In the granum, granum consists of a thylakoid, many thylakoid that stack light in the granum. In the phylocoin membrane, they are photosynthetic pigments. So this diagram shows you the chlorophyll structure. So these photosynthetic pigments are organized with pigment binding proteins. Here they show you the chlorophyll. Here there are many proteins. So these are the proteins that combines with the chlorophylls that form a photosystem. So maybe this structure, this diagram, that you can't see the photosystem uh, organized need. Then we look at this. So this is a photosystem. This is the phytochrome membrane, phospholipid by the ear. Each photosystem is composed of a reaction center complex. So here is a reaction center complex. Then, and surrounded by several light harvesting complex. So this light harvesting complex, they are the protein. Okay. The reaction center complex consists of a special pair of chlorophyll A. So this is here is a pair of chlorophyll A. Okay. A special pair of chlorophyll A in the reaction center complex. And a primary electron acceptor. This is the primary electron acceptor. So these two components are found in a reaction center. And for each light harvested complex consists of various photosynthetic pigments, including chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, carotene, xanthophylls. So they are found, these several photosynthetic pigments are found in light harvesting complex. So this is a photosystem. Okay, when a pigment molecule within a photosystem absorb light energy. It means that the accessory pigment, that means the photosynthetic pigments in light harvesting complex absorb the light energy. Then this energy passes from one pigment to another pigment within the light harvesting complex until it reaches the special pair of chlorophyll A in the reaction center. The electrons within the chlorophyll A molecules, the electrons they found inside this uh, chlorophyll A in the reaction center, are photoactivated. Okay, photoactivated because they obtain the enough uh, energy. Okay, so photoactivated and to be accepted by the primary electron acceptor. 
which is also found in the reaction center. So still remember this uh, diagram, okay, which is uh, in the previous lessons, we talked about this. So the photon energies that absorbed by the molecules pigments, they are for this, this part, okay, where the electron is returned to the original uh, low energy orbital, but the photon energy is released. So from one pigment molecules to another pigment molecules until they reach the chlorophyll A, the special uh, pair of chlorophyll A, where the electrons are photoactivated. Okay, are photoactivated and to be accepted by primary electron acceptor in the reaction center. So there are two types of photosystem. Photosystem one and photosystem two. So the photosystem one has a reaction center chlorophyll A, Known as P700. Okay, P700, because it most effectively absorbs the light of wavelength 700 nanometer, which is the far red light. In contrast, for the in the photosystem 2, the chlorophyll A, the special pair of the chlorophyll A is known as P680. Because it most effectively absorbs light of the wavelength. 680 nanometer, which is the red light. So this is a PS1, this is a PS2. Light dependent reactions. Photosynthesis comprises the light dependent reactions and followed by the light independent reactions. The light dependent reactions occur in the final coil. Whereas the light independence reactions occur in stroma. And this light independent reactions is most uh, common known as Kelvin cycle, which is occurs in stroma. In light dependence reactions, electrons in the reaction center of the photosystems they are photo activated and accepted by the primary electron acceptor that becomes reduced. Then the electrons are passed through the non cyclic and cyclic phosphor relations, photo phosphor relations. Okay, so that means the photo activated electron that accepted by the primary electron acceptor will pass through the non cyclic photo phosphor relation as well as the cyclic photophosphor relation. So to synthesize ATP and reduce NADP. This ATP and reduce NADP will be used in the light independence reactions. That is the Kelvin cycles to fix the carbon dioxide into glucose. So this video we are talking about the non-cyclic photophosphorylations. The common lessons will be the cyclic photophosphorylations. Green plants use photosystem two and photosystem one in series to produce both ATP and reduce NADP during the non-cyclic photophosphorylations. The light harvesting complex here absorb a photon of light energy and transfer the energy to the reaction center where it photon activates electrons in the chlorophyll A or we call it in the P680 if it is in the uh, PS2 and uh, this reaction center is P700 if it is the PS1. Then this photo Activated electron, for example, you see this is the photosystem two first and photosystem one. Then this photo activated electron from the P680 okay, is transferred, that means photo activated and to be accepted by the primary electron acceptor. So this is the primary electron acceptor of the PS1. This is the primary electron acceptor of the PS2. Okay. Uh, so after that, which is the first of the several electrons acceptor, here there are several electron acceptor. Okay, so the primary is the first one. Then this electron, uh, photoactivated electrons, 
then do not return to them. Okay, do, do not return to the uh, what we call the call of A, but they will go from the PS2, the from the primary electron acceptor of the PS2, pass through the the other electron acceptor. So here, this one is known as the electron transport chain, ETC, after that to be accepted by P700. And then from here, the electron on the P700 also is photo activated and to be accepted by the primary electron acceptor in the PS1, and they pass to the next electron acceptor. And then at the end, it's used to reduce the NADP into reduce NADP. Okay. The photosystems too is replenished with electrons obtained by photolysis of water. So once the, in photosystem two, once the electrons from P680 is activated, is photo activated. So here the, re, the remaining one is the P680 positive, which is an oxidized form, the mean lack of electrons. So this will cause photolysis of water, in which the, an enzyme called the water splitting enzyme, they contain the manganese, they split up the water. They split up the water into the hydrogen ions, oxygen, and electrons. Then the electron release will enter or reduce the oxidized P680. Then the, then the electrons later will continue to be photoactivated. The oxygen gas produced will be released into the atmosphere. So this is the panel equations, the chemical equations for this photolysis of water. So here is the photolysis of water. Then uh, connect the electrons to the P680. So in non-cyclic photophosphorylations, the photosystem two at first. High energy electron generated by the photosystem two are used to synthesize the ATP when they pass through the ETC. And at the end, they pass to the photosystem one. Then after that, end up with the production of reduced NADP. So a pigment molecules in photosystem two absorb a photo of energy. Then the energy is transferred okay, to the other and then to the end. Uh, then after that, received by the P680 as you know. Okay. And the photo activated energy, uh, no, the photo activated electrons from P680, which is the uh, reaction center in the PS2. Okay, the photo activated electron will be accepted by the primary electron acceptor, which is known as biophytin. So remember, biophytin is the primary electron acceptor in PS2. Photosystem two. Then, from the field of fighting, these photo activators will be passed along the electron transport chain, the ETC, until it is accepted by P700 in photosystem one. So, as the electron transfer along the ETC, Okay, that which they connect the PS2 to the PS1. Okay, so first from the field fighting, they pass to uh, plastoquinone. Then after that to the cytochrome complex, and then to the plastocyanin, and at the end to the P700. So along the ETC, some of the energy is lost. Okay, some of the energy they carry by the photoactivated electrons are lost. And then this energy, the, this lost energy, 
is used to pump the proton by the cytochrome complex. Okay, so from the stroma, okay, from the stroma here, okay, here stroma, okay, from the stroma into the phylocoid membrane, okay, into the phylocoid membrane. So to establish a proton gradient between the stroma and the phylocoid lumen. So like it show you in this diagram. So this is the photosystem two. This is the photosystem one. Okay, so once the electron pass through this uh, electron transport chain, the energy that released is used to pump the proton from the stroma into the phylocoid lumen to establish a proton gradient between the phylocoid lumen and the stroma. Then this Protons, the protons in the phylocoid lumens will pass through the ATP synthase. That is used to phosphorylate ADP into ATP by chemiosmosis. So this process produces ATP. Okay, meanwhile, that means at the same time, the photosystem one. Okay, in the photosystem one, light energy also transfer. See the photon energy also transfer to from one molecule, one pigment molecules to another pigment molecules, and uh, to photoactivate the electrons from p seven hundred. Then these electrons, these photoactivated electrons from p seven hundred, is accepted by the primary electron acceptor, which is the iron sulfide. Okay. Then this, now they create, they result in the oxidized P700. Then this, now this P700 can now act as an electron acceptor to accept the electron from PS2. So the photoactivated electrons are passed along the second electron transport chain from the iron sulfide to the peridoxin. So this is the second ETC to the peridoxin. And then after that, the electron from the, will be transferred from the peridoxin to oxidize NADP, which will be converted into, which will be reduced into reduced NADP. So for the first ETC, they produce ATP by chemiosmosis. But for the second ETC, does not create a proton gradient. So does not produce ATP for the second one. Okay, the feridocin transfer the electrons to oxidize NADP okay, in the presence of enzyme feridoxins. Uh, oxidized and NADP reductase. Okay. So when the oxidized and NADP accept the two electrons, so they unite with the protons, so to form the reduced NADP, which is released into the stroma. So ATP and the reduced NADP they produce will be used in the light independent reaction, or we call the Kelvin cycle. Okay, so this is how the, the, what we call the reduced NADP is produced and the ATP is produced. So both of these products will be released into the stroma. So the skin shown by the energy changes of the electron as they travel down the electron transport chain, they connect the photosystem two with the photosystem one. So from through the non-cyclic, this one we call it as a non-cyclic photophosphor relation. Phosphor relation because they involve the ATP formation of the ATP. Photo is this formation, this synthesis of ATP is required the light energy. And it is non-cyclic because the electron start from here, the P6 at zero, it allows the ETC to the P700 and along the ETC to the oxidized NADP. So this is a non-cyclic. 
and the diagram show you is like a Z, so which is known as the Z diagram as well. Some people will say that this is an N scheme. This of calling is an N scheme or N diagram. And some of them call this is a Z diagram. So no matter is N or Z, sure it is a non-cyclic photophosphor relation. So the summary of non-cyclic photophosphor relations that involve PS1 and PS2, okay, PS2 first, and then after that followed by PS1. Then the photolysis of water that produces a uh, proton, oxygen, and electrons. So the protons is involved in the chemiosmosis and synthesizes the reduced NADP, whereas the oxygen is released into the atmosphere and used by organisms during aerobic respiration. Then the electrons are passed to, uh, to the P680 and along the ETC to P700 and then reduce the oxidized NADP into reduced NADP. Okay. And uh, the non-cyclic photophosphor relations also synthesized uh, ATP by chemical osmosis. And the ATP and the reduced NADP are used for light independence reactions. So this is the checklist. So after at the end of this video, okay, this lesson, uh, I hope you are able to describe the photo system and also to explain the photo activations of the chlorophyll A resulting in the photolysis of water and explain the non-cyclic photophosphorylation including the electron transport system resulting in the production of ATP and reduced NADP. So the next lessons will be cyclic photophosphorylation and we compare the non-cyclic photophosphorylations with the cyclic photophosphorylations. So that's all for this lesson. Thank you.